friends, today I'm trying something that will take me back to my childhood and also help me get rid of the acrylic paint I've been hoarding since college. And that is painting Pokemon cards. I had no idea this was even a thing until my boyfriend got into Pokemon card packs and suggested that I try painting the ones that don't sell very well online, which turns out to be most of them, unfortunately. So I have a lot to choose from for this video. I think it's an interesting concept to take something super nostalgic and reinvent it, and it reminds me of when I was little and I would draw my own Pokemon cards. And while my mom's printer paper is not TCG legal, it's worth just as much. In our hearts. I also think it's a cool exercise for artists that are just getting into traditional because you have to color match exactly and try to blend it as seamlessly as you can. So if you're still learning how to mix paint colors, then I think this would be a really fun exercise. I used to be good at mixing paint colors, but I've been doing digital for about two years now and I'm probably a little frosty. So we are going to go do that and maybe get a cup of tea first because this is going to take a while. So I had a lot of cards to sort through, but I was able to narrow it down pretty easily. I gravitated towards cards that had the potential to naturally expand their backgrounds. I was so drawn to Psyduck's shocked little expression, so I decided to paint a scene where he dropped his onigiri into the river, or should I say his jelly donut for those of us that grew up with the English dub. Then for Yamper, I was inspired by the campsites from Sword and Shield and wanted to draw him hanging out by a picnic blanket with a pot of curry cooking nearby. For Mudbray, my idea was to reveal some fossil Pokemon in the dirt beneath. You'll see that when I actually started painting, I went in different directions with a few of these, but I think the changes were made for the better. I prepped the cards by sanding down the areas without art and painting them first white and then another coat closer to the color they would end up as. I used mostly craft paint for this project, so I needed to really build up that opacity and cover up the original lettering. I'm curious to see how this process would work with hollow foil cards, if there is a good way to let the foil show through while also extending the art, or if I need to just buy my own foil sheets to add afterwards. This process was super fun though and it made me so nostalgic. I first got into Pokemon not from the trading cards or the video games, but from the TV show. I grew up watching Ash, Misty, and Brock travel the world and fight Team Rocket, and yes, I was highly disappointed when Misty and Togepi parted ways with the team, but May grew on me over time. But even if you weren't engaged with the show, Pokemon was so iconic as a kid you couldn't not know about it. One of my favorite memories of loving Pokemon is one Halloween when I went as Charmander in this little fleece red onesie. I'm pretty sure my parents made everything for our costumes except for the plastic masks. My dad is actually the one that paper macheed and painted my brother's Blastoise shell. Look at my face there. You can tell I knew how sick this thing was. And the thought of my dad, 20 some years younger, and building this silly costume for his son just reminds me how lucky I am even if he made it way too heavy and ended up carrying it around all Halloween night. But you can see that from a young age, I loved Pokemon. I can still remember going to Toys R Us with all the money I saved up from birthday cards and picking out three little Pokemon plushies. I picked out Torchic, Mudkip, and Pichu because I guess fuck Trico. But Mudkip is still easily my favorite starter with Grookey being a pretty close second. My love of Mudkip is nothing strategic, don't get me wrong, it has nothing to do with it being a water crown combo or anything useful, I just think he's neat is all. Okay, let's take a second to talk about the process here and what I found works best versus what I struggled with. The sanding and priming made it way easier to cover up the text and turn these into full art cards. Just be careful not to sand over the parts you want to keep, like the Pokemon themselves. The craft paints worked great straight out of the bottle, but I ran into some problems with mixing. Craft paints are awesome and affordable, but they're usually made from a mixture of pigments even when they're primary colors. This is why it isn't always good to darken a color with black paint, because often it isn't just a black pigment, it's also blue pigment in there. So adding black to yellow won't necessarily give you dark yellow, it'll often lean more towards green. Mixing colors like brown can be difficult because you're not just mixing blue, red, and yellow. You're mixing yellow with a little bit of white, blue with a little bit of black, etc. 
So you'll see me repaint Mudbray's field a couple times because I just couldn't get the yellow to work with me. I ended up running to Joann's for some better paints and they actually had the Liquitex Basics on sale for $2 off, so I grabbed all my primaries. I'd never tried Liquitex Basics before. In the past, for art classes, I would use Winsor & Newton in college but I ended up loving them. The consistency was like really buttery and the pigmentation was awesome. So I think next time I'm gonna just go straight into those Liquitex paints and skip the craft altogether, unless it's a color that I just can't mix myself. But it's honestly personal preference and if you wanna try this at home, I encourage you to use whichever medium you're most comfortable with, whether that be gouache, acrylic, or even oil. This really is a great exercise for color matching and has such a good payoff. Even if you don't get it perfect, it is so freaking satisfying and really turns that nostalgia dial up to a 10. Speaking of nostalgia, I would describe my childhood self as a nervous gamer, if that makes sense. I love the TV show, but when I tried to play the video games, I was just way too scared of actually fighting other Pokemon, which is hilarious and objectively stupid. Nothing bad happens if you lose, your Pokemon just faint. And it's not like a Nuzlocke where you banish your fallen Pokemon into box eight. All you have to do is bring them back to Nurse Joy but my refusal to walk in the grass kept me from enjoying main series Pokemon games for a long time, but I did get into some of the spinoffs. Specifically, I played a lot of Pokemon Stadium on the Nintendo 64. It was full of so many great mini games, and I went back while editing this video to look at some of the mini games, and it is like I unlocked some old memories from the recesses of my mind. Some of my favorites were Rock Harden, Run Ratata Run, I forgot about that one completely, Clefairy Says, and the ever iconic Sushi Go Round. You basically just play as a lick -a tongue and try to eat more food than your friends, which is a dream. I loved it, I was obsessed. I also played Pokemon Channel. I'll be honest, I have no memory of what this game actually involved, but I vividly remember playing tic-tac-toe on Cobalt Coast. I think you went fishing sometimes? Maybe? There was a windmill somewhere? As you can see, I remember more about the feeling of loving Pokemon and the feeling of playing these games on a rainy day or with my two older brothers than I do any actual details of what happened. And that's what I love about Pokemon. It gives me that cozy feeling even on my worst days. And I didn't really experience that cozy feeling again until fall of 2019 when Sword and Shield came out. All my friends were pretty hyped for it and I was starting to get into video games myself. So I bandwagoned the hell out of that game and it was so much fun. Something about playing a new release with all your closest friends just makes a game 10 times better. It was especially helpful because I didn't know much about type charts or strategies, so I had friends to ask for advice, but we also got to talk about which gyms we'd beat so far or who had caught a shiny. I also loved dumb parts of this game, like I became weirdly obsessed with the curry in the campsite. It's just so cute, I want to eat it so badly, and I considered making this video into a vlog and trying it out, but it would have been way too long. Someday Pikachu shaped curry, someday. Also, Galarian Ponyta, splendid. I couldn't have designed her better myself. If a six-year-old me knew about Galarian Ponyta, she would have dedicated her whole existence to that horse, guaranteed. I really loved working on this project more than I expected, in part because it's been so long since I dived back into acrylic paint and it was so satisfying to see it come together. My art journey really started in high school using gallons of just terrible acrylic paint, and then I discovered oil paint, and then watercolor, and finally in college I started digital. And I still love digital for all the things it lets me do and the awesome effects, but this project kind of felt like going back to my roots. I don't know if I'm going to be pulling my canvases out of storage necessarily, but I'm definitely going to keep painting cards. I think the next thing I want to try is some of the jumbo cards, so if you guys have any recommendations for which ones I should order and repaint, let me know down below. I've already got a couple picked out, but I am open to suggestions. 
The other reason I love this project was just the nostalgia. All of the things I talked about in this video from Halloween with my dad to playing Pokemon Stadium are memories I haven't really thought about in a long time and it's got me really inspired for future projects where I can play with nostalgia again. When I was a kid, I was also obsessed with all of the Barbie movies. I went as Rapunzel every year that I wasn't going as Charmander. I also loved Hello Kitty Party Pals. That was one of my favorite video games. Dogs. oh my God, Dogs. I don't know what happened to my little Yorkie named Akiko, but I hope she's flourishing somewhere. So let me know what shows or games you guys are nostalgic for in the comments, and maybe we can see art of it in a future video. If you guys are watching this and thinking painting Pokemon cards looks fun, I say just go for it. Prompts like these are awesome for creativity because they give you parameters to work within. A blank slate is amazing, but it's also so intimidating that if you give yourself a prompt, it gives you a problem to solve and helps you be even more creative. You could use this as a warm-up exercise or as a present for a Pokemon fan in your life. I frame these three and put them on my wall and since recording this video, I see them every day and they always bring a smile to my face. If you try this out, please tag me wherever you post them. I'm kind of obsessed right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a while since I made a YouTube video and I'm honestly feeling really inspired right now and excited to keep making art and talking about the process. So if you guys wanna keep following my journey and maybe share your own art and stories, feel free to subscribe and stick around for the next one. Bye.